Whenever a new non-nerfer comes over to Flux Labs, there's a few blasters I always pull off the wall and show. One of which is this. This is the Renfield from Shellington Labs. Now the Renfield is a shell ejecting, magazine accepting, bolt action springer. Now the Renfield is a very high powered blaster, very effective at around 100 feet if you can get a good scar on it. And it's just an overall dream to use. It has a really nice, easy prime for how much power is the back here. And it's just one of those blasters that every time I play with it, I always have a smile on my face. Without a shadow of a doubt, I consider the Renfield from Shellington Labs is a shining star as to what the hobby can offer. Now, some of you are probably asking, shell ejecting, why shell ejecting? And to answer that, I would say, because it's cool. But to be completely honest, there's something about Nerf that I love, and that's the kind of the flashy, the cool, the, the bright color stuff, the, the things that aren't practical, I like. And to me, it's it encompasses the spirit of Nerf. You know, it has a gimmick, it has something that's unique. But along with its gimmick, it also has super high power and is actually a very viable offering for something like a competitive game or whatnot. And in addition, as we explain more later in this video, the Kirin is actually a great offering for competitive play. And we'll go into detail as to why. And speaking of the Kirin, this right here is just a very exciting announcement. I want to give a special congratulations to Shellington Labs, Heath Hill, and all that was involved in making this a reality. This is truly an awesome achievement to get a blaster that's, you know, a 3D printed product all the way through development into a injection molded, finished, beautiful box. Like, look at this thing, product in your hand. Yeah, you heard me. This blaster right here is injection molded and it truly is a powerhouse clocking in over 250 FPS with the assorted springs that it comes with. So in today's video, we are gonna be exploring the history of the Kirin, the Renfield, you know, how they came to be. And we're gonna go into more detail as to why the Kirin is such an amazing platform. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Now, if we're going to talk about the Kirin, we got to talk about a super talented designer from the Nerf modding or 3D printed community. And his name is GDOP26. Now, if you're not familiar with who GDOP26 is, he is the father of the Spring Thunder. Now, the Spring Thunder is a truly amazing platform. This is a spring powered shell ejecting 12 gauge looking shotgun thing, which is truly remarkable and is actually behind me. You can, you can see it up there. Very cool blaster. The Spring Thunder introduced a new shell type known as, you know, Spring Thunder shell, but he didn't stop there. He also went on to develop the fly point. Now the fly point is very important for the story of the Kirin because it uses the same shells. Now the fly point, as you can see here, is a flywheel blaster. It takes uh, two of the micro wheels. This blaster is so cool because it actually has an action, it has like recoil, Oil. It takes a magazine with shells, has shell ejecting, lipo powered, and is truly an engineering marvel as to how much stuff he fit into a pistol form factor. If you'd like to see more about this blaster, I got a full video. So the Flypoint shell, why is it so good? Now the Flypoint shell has become kind of a staple across the hobby as a standardized shell type, mainly because it holds the short dart and it holds it well. Now I'd like to take a moment to explain why shells are so good. A lot of people are like, well, that just adds extra steps. It's not as good, blah, blah, blah. And to be honest, the reason why a shell is so good is because it keeps the darts intact. And when you put darts into a magazine, you'll notice over time, as you use these darts, they get smashed, they get kind of jammed up. However, when you put a dart in a shell, it kind of protects it. So in theory, you should get more use out of your darts. Your darts will not be getting smashed by having them in a magazine, so they shouldn't deform, thus giving you better accuracy because the darts are not deformed when they shoot out the barrel. So in that regard, shells are good. It's also worth noting the hobby has actually taken a liking to these shells and has used them in other builds. Genco Megaworks is a good example as they have built an entire blaster around these shells. So really cool to see. But moving on, let's take a look at the Renfield. Now the Renfield can be viewed as a prototype for the current because of its 3D printed nature. And this blaster itself has gone through revisions to get a perfect finished product. Now something I've seen in the Nerf hobby, in the 3D printed Nerf hobby in, in particular, is the this, the excessive usage of 3D printed parts as kind of like a final solution for something. Now this is fine, but you gotta keep in mind, this is still prototyping. You know, the 3D printed parts are still prototyping. And what do I mean by that? Now prototyping parts 
are good for if you're trying to make revisions, you're trying to make tweaks and get things kind of nailed down. You don't really want to go and get stuff injection molded because injection molding is extremely expensive because you got to make molds and they're, they're made out, they're like milled out of aluminum or metal or whatever, and they actually will sit there and inject plastic into them. And if you need to make a tweak as to how something looks like a part, you're now remaking your mold, which is the most expensive part of injection molding is having to make the molds. So what you want to do is get a finalized part, you know, something that is ready to go and then send it off to be injection molded. Also, there's the concept of, you know, you got to return on investment. So, you know, if I, if I want to go get this part injection molded, I need to sell, you know, now we're looking at thousands of units as opposed to a few hundred. So if you're looking to sell a few hundred of something, 3D printing's fine. And when you look across the Nerf scene and all the little small stores and whatnot, you know, when they sell these products, they're usually, they're, they're not looking to sell thousands upon thousands of that product. So it's perfectly normal to see all these 3D printed parts and designs. Now, why, why does all this matter? This all matters because seeing a blaster that has gone from this to this is amazing because what we have here is a finalized product. We have something that has reached its level of perfection to the point where like, okay, we're gonna invest money, time, energy, and we're gonna make this thing a final product for people to buy. And that to me is amazing that the hobby, the community, all of you has, you know, basically we've had something truly come out of it. Now, I wanna take a quick moment to talk about, you know, Dart Zone, because I've seen this over and over and over in many of the hobbies that I've been in, 3D printing in particular. So what you have is a large corporation or a large company that sees an opportunity. And I'm not sitting here saying that these companies are bad. They're doing what they can do to turn over a profit. Because in the end, companies want to make money. That's why they exist. But the problem is when you have a company that comes in and they, they try to pretend and act like they are they are one of you. We're modders, we're passionate, we get you, we get you. And here is our blaster. Here is all our blasters here and they just keep dumping and dumping blaster. I'm talking about Dart Zone, by the way. <laughs> but in the end, Dart Zone really is not one of us. You know, they're, they're not really. They're a large toy manufacturer, they're a large company. You know, they're as much as one of us as Hasbro is or X-Shot or whoever. They're really just trying to capitalize and make money off of the hobby. So they try to act like they're one of us. This right here, this blaster, this packaging, this is from one of us. This is from the hobby. You know, this isn't Game Face. This isn't Dart Zone. This isn't a private company that's got together and said, hey, I don't know how we can make a few bucks. You know, and they just kind of hijack an already thriving and established community. This is directly from the hobby. And that's why it's so exciting. Because if anything, the Dart Zone thing is really just, is just a wolf in sheep's clothing, really. You know, it's just someone camouflaging as one of us. You know, hey, we're, hey guys, we're part of the hobby. Not really, okay? But Shellington Labs, definitely, really cool. So with all that laid out, I hope you understand why it's so exciting that Karen exists. I hope you understand why I'm so excited about it, why to see something in formation from the hobby to grow up and then become like a full on product. You know, this blaster really is a success story and I'm just excited and I wanna share that with you. So moving on, let's talk about the Kirin. Like, what is it? You know, you're, you're all wondering, well, why is it so good? You got, you got my attention, why is it so good? Now, before we get started, I do wanna take a quick moment to thank Frontline Foam for sending in the review model. This is such a big deal because there wasn't a lot of these in the country and not a lot of people have had their hands on one of these. So thank you for sending one in. And we love this thing so much here down at Flux Labs. We put it through a lot of testing that, you know, we went back to Frontline Foam and said, hey, can we please get one for ourselves? Because we had to we had to mail the other one back. And so they're like, oh yeah, sure. And so they actually sent this one down. This is the, this is our version, you know, the, the uh, turquoise one and Oh, it's just so good to have one of these, and I have a lot of great things I want to do with it. So with that out of the way, hey, let's talk about Kirin. All right, so the blaster is designed by Shellington Labs and in a collaboration with Heath Hill. And on the side of the blaster, you can see it says actual MHP, Mr. Heath Pants Arms Company. And on this side, we got Shellington blasters and a little note here for human use only. No zombies. 
Now keep in mind, this is the most powerful and competitive shell ejecting blaster on the market. There's nothing that competes with it right now. You know, the performance of this thing and the durability and swappability of the springs and just the overall design of it is one of the best out there, if not the best. Now the company that had a hand in the actual injection molding process and manufacturing of this is uh, Phantom Tech. So what is the Curin? Like I said earlier, this thing is bolt action, shell ejecting, takes a magazine, you know, is easily, uh, you can swap out springs, it's got easy takedown pins, it's got th three pins that allow you to take it down. It has an ambidextrous bolt, so you can actually swip it, switch it out, and switching this thing is not hard at all. So if you wanna pass it off to a friend and maybe let them run it in a round or so, you can quickly switch this thing out from left-handed to right-handed in pretty quick amount of time. I would not recommend doing this during a game, but definitely in between games. So let's go over what comes in the box. Obviously you get the base blaster, you get three different springs. Each one is a different strength. So you got a weaker one, a mid, mid one, and then you have a strong spring. Keep in mind the strong spring, which we'll go over chronograph readings, but the strong spring should be hitting over 260, 250 FPS. This comes with two magazines. These are, these hold seven darts a piece with shells. So it's a shell in dart in a magazine, so pretty cool. And we have 20 injection molded shells. I love these things. I have a ton of 3D printed ones and getting my hands on the injection molded shells is just way better than having a 3D printed shell. You know, they're way more durable. You can step on them. You don't risk cracking them. And yeah, they're great. And they chose a good color. You got bright orange, so they're easy to find. And lastly, there are 10 darts. These are a yellow dart with a blue head, so pretty easy to see. And they appear to be very similar to the worker dart or even the Adventure Force Pro short dart. Packaging looks beautiful. Everything is high quality. It feels like a good finished product. In the package, you'll see there's a little bag of parts here. This right here is, I believe it's the thing that holds it, the ejector in, because the ejector changes from side to side, depending on if you're left or right-handed. And then it comes with some O-rings. And overall, the assembly of this blaster is very, very easy, very quick. That's the one thing I love about this thing is the easy takedown of it. So in that regard, really cool. Let's go ahead and check out some chronograph readings. Now, we did a lot of testing with these. I wanted to check, you know, different combinations with the different barrel sizes and the different spring sizes. Now, when looking at these numbers, keep in mind the stock regular barrel that comes with the blaster is uh, gonna be the short barrel. And then we actually had the long barrel. I don't have the long barrel now, but we were able to get some, basically some readings off of both and try to mess around with the spring to the barrel size. Now we did this so that hopefully you can take a look at the barrel length to the spring size and all that stuff and kind of get an idea of as to what you're looking for, you know, for whatever games you're playing. So starting off, that is the short barrel with the soft spring. 103.2, 95.3, 106, 105.8, 113, 108.8, and 78.8. Now the 78.8 is kind of an outlier. I think we still calculated in and we got an average of 101.56. Next up, we tried the short barrel with the stiff spring. So we pretty much skipped the middle spring on these tests and we just did the softest spring with the, the hardest spring. Now, short barrel with strongest spring, that was 194.9, with an average of 221.1. Next up is, uh, this one was inconclusive and we determined this to be not an optimal setup. Keep in mind, we were using worker Gen 3 darts. I did not have the darts that were provided with this blaster. We just had some worker darts. We couldn't really get good numbers on this. And this was long barrel with the weakest spring. So we got 54 and then I barely could get it to shoot you know, a couple times. Then we finally got something to come out, came out at 106, then another one at 81.7. Then it dropped down to 57.9 and then just another failure, another failure. So inconclusive, let's not even, consider that one. And finally, my favorite one, which was the long barrel with the strongest spring. This was 237.5, 238.3, 207.8, 261.6, 
with a grand total of 227 FPS. So really amazing. And here we have just a chart, just to kind of capture our findings. And yeah, do what you want with that. After that, we wanted to do some range and accuracy testing. We did this at 50 feet. And this thing was super accurate without a scar. I was getting some pretty good tags. So we have a scar here from uh, out of darts. I'll put a link in the description. This thing helped a lot. And I, I did a setup with the long barrel, with this scar, with the, with the strongest spring, and I had great success. So when I build out mine, number one, I gotta get a longer barrel, and then I need to basically, I wanna build this out with this scar. Without a shadow of a doubt, I can say this is a very good tagger at anything from, you know, 30 feet all the way up to over 100 feet easy. You know, so if you got long, long range sniper type of battles, if that's your thing, you know, you like the whole bolt action sniper hiding in the bushes, this is definitely your blaster. Now that we've got the chronograph and the accuracy and all that out of the way, many of you are probably watching this video saying, you know what, you said this is a high performance competitive blaster. I can't get behind the fact this thing has shells, I'm sorry. And to, to all of you, I agree. Having a shell ejecting blaster in a competitive scene when you're working with a team, you know, in a, in a highly competitive game, shells don't work. You know, I'm just gonna be honest, they don't work. However, there is a kit that converts this blaster into something that accepts angled talons. This is huge. Now you can use angled talons, and I've heard rumors of other stuff that actually can make normal talons compatible with it. So, you know, if, you, if you're not into the shell ejecting thing because you truly are looking for a competitive blaster and you wanted a good bolt action, this is it. You know, this is gonna be your blaster of choice. So when I get that part in, I'm gonna be, you know, fine tuning mine. I'm gonna install it, probably give it some paint, make it kind of fluxify it, if you will. And um, let me know in the comment section if you wanna see a video on that. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. Now I do wanna take a moment to talk about what we're doing here. Many of you have probably noticed that we have done a ton of shorts. Now this was part of a test, kind of a trial run to see the new you know, shorts algorithm and how it all works and everything. And we've concluded the test. So now if you came to the channel and you subscribed for shorts, don't worry, you'll still see shorts here. Just not to the excess that you saw before because we're doing two a day. That is not a feasible model to do two shorts a day and a long form each week. I mean, it's only uh, two of us here and you know we just don't have the time to do that much work. So if you like the long form videos, if this is what you like, please share this video. Please comment on it, like it, make sure you're subscribed and that helps tell the algorithm to promote this video and hopefully it goes, you know, hits more viewers and does better, which in return gets us to, you know, continue to make more long form videos. But, you know, it's very important, you know, without, without all of you, like this doesn't really exist. So any help you can do, big, awesome help. If you would like to support the channel in any way, we do offer a Patreon. On the Patreon, you're gonna get an opportunity to you know, meet with me and talk to me, depending on the level that you choose. And you can also get some behind the scenes content or updates you know, as to what we're doing here and just have more influence and more engagement with myself and my team to uh, basically make content. So if you'd like to support us, big, it would be a big help. We're in a studio now, this is not our house, this is not, we don't own this, so we actually pay rent. So Patreon members, you're a huge help to all this. So, you know, thank you so much. We're all gonna be offering more uh, tier level stuff for our Patrons. We need to take care of our Patrons and make sure they feel very valued. And you're, you're a big part of all this, so thank you. As always, I wanna thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Flux, happy foam flinging. Mm -hmm.